Orca is an esoteric programming language made by 100 rabbits. Um, it's bonkers. Like most esoteric languages, uh, it's, it's wild. It basically is um, something that you'd use to sequence events. So typically people are using it to make experimental sound or, or techno or whatever kind of sound they want to produce, often in a live coding situation where they're actually manipulating the program in real time to create the sound. But there's no reason it couldn't do something totally different, like send messages to an Arduino that's controlling a robot. It essentially just, you know, creates these events either as MIDI messages or UDP messages or OSC messages, uh, either maybe over a network or maybe to a piece of um, a, a synth that's running on this computer or maybe a synth that is um, like a hardware synth that's connected to the computer. So uh, it's it's fun. It's uh, strange, like everything that Hundred Rabbits makes, it's kind of like elegant and beautiful and also ugly at the same time. And um, it's uh, simple and totally cryptic at the same time. So I just wanted to make this video partly for myself to kind of like uh, have a document that's sort of like a, a reference or, you know, I guess it's, it's maybe it's like a tutorial, but um, it's kind of an introduction and enough to get you started. I'm going to leave all the sound stuff out of it because um, what I'm going to focus on are just the operators for the language, which are just uh, the letters of the alphabet for the most part, and then these extra eight or so that are um, tacked onto the end. So pressing control G gives you the list of all the operators and um, uh, other things that are worth knowing are that it kind of reads from reads like a book, like an English English language book anyway, where uh, you're kind of going row by row from left to right, top to bottom. So if I put a pound sign in here, everything to the right of the pound sign will be ignored by Orca. So anything I put here, it can be, you know, just a comment. I'll explain other things as I go, but let me just start right from A. So A is addition. If you, and, and also if you click on that, or uh, move your cursor, you can do everything with the mouse or not, nothing with the mouse. You can use the keyboard if you want. But when you click on the operator, it tells you down here what it is in the lower left. And if you click on the um, kind of highlighted dots, it shows that those are inputs A and B. So three plus three is six. That's it, that's, that's A. Uh, one thing to know is that the operators are in capital letters, even though here in the help it shows them as lowercase letters. Uh, but that doesn't mean you can't use lowercase letters. Uh, what's happening here is that it's actually adding three plus three and outputting six every frame of uh, the program's execution. The frames are down here. This is the number of frames that have passed since I started. What is a frame? Well, it's, uh, you know, if you're, if you're dealing with music, you don't really think in frames, you think in maybe beats. And so down here we have 60 beats per minute is the current BPM setting setting. And you can see this asterisk that's blinking. That's actually blinking on every beat. So a frame is, uh, for beats if that helps. Um, so what can happen is if I use a lowercase letter instead of one of the uppercase letters for the operators, you can see that everything turns gray. And uh, if I change one of these numbers, it doesn't actually change the output. And that's because this is not actually updating every frame. So there are a couple ways that I can deal with that. And you'll see some uh, reasons why we might do this later. But if I hit control P, it uh, updates that uh, operator for just this one frame. So let me change this to four, control P, you can see it updates the output to seven. Okay, I'll explain more about that later, but for now, I'm just going to control N for a new project and I'll use B, which is the next letter. Uh, B is just subtraction. Four minus two is two, that's it. C is a counter or a clock. And basically it counts from, uh, in this case with the defaults zero th through seven. So the defaults for the default for the rate input is one and the mod or modulus input is eight. So you can see I put a one in there and an eight there and nothing's changed. It's going zero through seven at about the same rate. So this rate is actually, um, if it's a one, then it's the same as the frame count or the frame rate. And uh, if I put a two in there, it's half the frame rate. So it's going slower. 
this uh, modulus essentially, you know, it's actually doing modulus, which is if you divide, what's the remainder? But um, it's easier to think sometimes just that it's going to count from zero to one less than whatever this mod uh, input is. So if I put a four in here or five, it's going to count from zero to four. That's that. Uh, D is for delay. That's how it's listed. Um, but it, I also kind of think of it as a divider, but uh, it essentially does the same thing that count does. And it has the same uh, defaults of one and eight for rate and mod. But uh, the output, instead of a increasing number is just a bang. So that asterisk is a bang. What is a bang? It's uh, essentially um, a trigger. So it triggers anything that is to the left or right or below it. We'll see that later. So right now you can see it's uh, with a rate of one and a mod of eight. Uh, it seems to be every other beat. If you look down at the asterisk below, if I do one and four, this is essentially, this is banging every beat. Okay, what else? E, uh, if I press E, all right, if I press E, it just uh, it creates an E that moves eastward. That's it. When it when it hits something uh, like the edge of the screen or another operator, it turns into a bang. So you can see that asterisk. F is an if statement. So uh, if four is equal to whoops, four is equal to five, then uh, it produces an output that's nothing. If four is equal to four, then it's a bang. So it looks like this is just on, but it's actually creating a bang every frame. If I wanted to know that it was doing that, I could use the counter or the clock that we saw earlier, and I'll use a lowercase c, and we'll see that it's, it is banging this every frame because um, the output of the counter or the clock is updating every frame. That's, uh, that's all there is to if. G is a generator. So if you um, look at the the uh, the inputs, this is says it's in zero, um, but actually an input over here is length. So if I put in four here, now I've got four separate inputs on the right side. So uh, one thing to note, by the way, is that if I want to start typing, like uh, when I press letters, they just overwrite each other. If I wanted to type, I can press Control I, and you can see down on the left that uh, coordinate. 35 comma 8 just had a plus added to the end of it and it turned green so now I'm actually typing so uh, I can hit escape to get out of there but I could do that here if I wanted to um, just say a b c d so what it's doing in this case is it's um, it said I've said that I want four uh, inputs here so that's what the number four there is and then uh, the first two are x and y the leftmost inputs so I can say this is going to be four over and six down so it takes whatever four inputs I had here and trans translates them down on the grid. Now you can imagine that uh, maybe I want this to be over here. Well, there are no negative numbers, so you'd have to actually move it over here. And so you start to get a sense that where things are placed on the grid matters. Okay. Uh, oh, let me show you something else with the, the generator. A, uh, a common thing to do is to maybe... Um, say that I want an E, which we saw is for east. It makes an eastbound kind of uh, moving E show up until it bangs. And what I could do is um, say that I just want to have that show up maybe eight uh, over from where it is and, um, and four down. So now I've got, uh, as I'm changing these numbers, you see that the remnants kind of still do their thing. So we saw that before, but uh, here it's just an E sitting there waiting. And if I actually add a counter here for the, um, for the Y value, then we'll see that it essentially is changing that Y value every frame. And we get this kind of waterfall of E's and they all bang on the right here in sequence. If there's something in the way, then, uh, you know, we can actually stop those from banging over there and they bang over here instead. So we start to see that we can make some, we can use uh, the 2D mapness of this to determine how things are timed, how the events are timed. Okay. 
H is halt. So whatever is below it is just kind of frozen. So normally if I press E, it starts uh, sending an E off into the right side of the screen. But by putting an H there, it freezes the E and uh, keeps it from moving. That's useful and we'll see times when it is. The next one is I, that is for increment. So it's counting up by uh, ones, that's the default. And uh, what is it counting up to? All the way to Z. This is the first time that we're recognizing that, um, you know, all of these uh, values that we've been putting in are just one character. So uh, I've been putting in numbers, but does that mean that a value in Orca can only be zero through nine? because we only have that one character uh, available. Well, no, because that would be base 10, which is you know just saying that it's uh, zero through nine or that all the possibilities. Instead, it uses something called base 36, which uh, just is you know classic uh, 100 rabbits, classic uh, esoteric language where it's coming, out, coming up with a new number system. So uh, what that means is that zero through nine are valid. And then from there, it goes A, B, C, D, all the way to Z. So you get uh, numbers between zero and 35. So if I put a, a Z here, that's what we've already got. Uh, but I can also put an eight here and tell it to count from uh, zero to seven. Remember that it's uh, mod minus one is what it counts to. So if I really wanted zero through eight, then I could uh, put a nine here. But um, zero through seven is is actually counting eight places. Now I can put a two here and that will start counting by twos. So we get zero, two, four, six. Uh, and you know, there is because it's only going zero through seven. But uh, it's interesting because depending on when you change it, See here, I changed it to one and then back to two. And so it's counting by twos, but they're odd numbers. So there is like kind of an interesting timing thing that happens there. Okay, J is jumper. So whatever is above will show up below. This is useful when you're trying to um, maneuver in tight spaces. So if I put a D here and I'm banging uh, with delay, then it's going to take that, that bang and translate it downward. And this is a very common need to be able to make space. Okay, uh, K is for contact, and this reads multiple variables. That's what the, uh, the help says, but for that, this is the only time I'm, I think I'm gonna have to um, jump ahead and then jump back. V allows us to store a variable. So you see this input is called write. I can put a letter here and that's a variable name and then I can uh, give it a value. So that's setting the value, the variable A to a value of five. Use the same operator over here uh, to recall the value of A. So if I put A on the right side, then five is the output. And you can see if I start changing them with a counter, then they're updated in both places. I can add more variables. Um, you know, maybe this is an A. Well, let's not confuse things. Just keep numbers. And um, so now we've got uh, several variables. I can say instead I'm interested in seeing the value of C. And this is where going back to the K is useful now that we understand that there are variables. This allows you to actually say how many variables you want to recall at once. So if I put in three here, it leaves three spaces and I can put in A, B, and C. And it recalls all three of those variables, but in a, in a row. I can also put in maybe five and recall A a couple times more. L is for less, whatever number, uh, whatever value is less is what it's going to output. So uh, what's less, two or four, two or seven, it's going to be outputting two. If I put in a zero here, it's always going to show zero because uh, there, that's always the lower of the two, except if there's nothing there. If there's nothing there, then the output will be nothing because that's lower than zero. So that's useful to know. Another useful thing to know is with most of these operators like less, uh, if I wanted to say which is less, A or B, it's going to tell me it's A. What if it was a capital A? Well, if I press A, it thinks I'm trying to use the addition operator. So that's not what I wanted. And it kind of turns into a mess. So I'm going to highlight and hit delete. And I will instead, I'll say which is less. And I can use the uh, H halt operator and say which is less, A or uh, lowercase b. 
and it's going to give me an A. For most of these operators, even if you give it a capital letter, the output is going to be a lowercase one. So this is an example where we, you know, we're actually translating a capital letter to a lowercase letter as kind of a side effect. M is multiply. I'm going to multiply 4 times 6. That gives me O. Uh, if I multiply 4 times 2, that's 8. So remember, it goes up 0 through 9 and then starts with A, which would be 10, B would be 11, and so on. Uh, another thing here is if I kind of do that same thing and um, multiply capital A by 1, it'll produce a lowercase a. Uh, it essentially always produces a lowercase output. One thing that we'll find is that there is a difference between values that are upper and lowercase, and that's with notes. So a capital F is the, the, the note F, but a lowercase f is an F sharp. N is north, so it's the same as east, but it goes up. O is to read a uh, value. So uh, if I put in a 4 here, it will just kind of translate it down below. But probably what we want is to use the X and Y uh, parameters here on the left. So if I say read something that is in uh, column, you know, four columns over, and six columns down, I can go over here and let's say I had some actual bunch of letters here. It's finding in that in the middle here the F. And um, I can, of course, also uh, y use something variable here, like let's say a counter. So it's actually taking all of those, uh, it's, it's finding in, in row number uh, six all of the values from zero to eight and translating them over under the zero, under the O. P is for push. So this takes a value, let's again just say it's A, and we've got a uh, length, which, you know, let's say there are five, and um, what I can do is just put in a value here for um, where I want to place that that uh, A. So um, I could say actually there are eight positions, and I want to place it in the first one because everything starts with zero or the second one or the third one and so on. And of course, I could use a counter as an example here. So it actually takes that A and moves it into each of those eight places. Um, let's say I wanted to um, put a C here. Now what it's doing is actually uh, they're kind of coordinated. So every time there's a new number here under the counter, it's uh, placing it in a new position uh, horizontally. So Q uh, takes some value. I can put in uh, a length here, say there are six. Uh, if I take each of these spaces on the inputs, it will basically translate them to underneath the Q. Uh, but probably more of what we're interested in is giving it a position on the screen. So let's say it's four over and eight down. So in this case, it's going to take whatever is in this area and it's going to move that under the queue. So here, this, this doesn't matter in this example. So um, yeah, it's just basically finding with X and Y the things that we want to translate and how many of them, and then it puts them underneath the queue as the output. R is for random. So it's basically just anything from this value to this value. Uh, so we get a zero, sometimes a one, sometimes, or we can go from one through uh, nine and we'll get values in that range. S is for south. It does the same thing as north and east, but it goes downward until it ends at a bang. T is for track, and uh, I'm just going to go right to the, the left side where there's an in, a length input. If I put in seven here, that means there are seven positions here, and the, the uh, key input is going to allow me to choose which of those gets uh, output. So let's put in some values here. Uh, let's say we want C, C, A, A, G, G, A, A. Oh. So that's seven. Uh, and then we can use this to determine which of them we're interested in returning as the output. And of course, we can use uh, the counter. Um, I want to make sure it matches the actual number of items that I have. So I'd want to go zero through six in this case. 
And you can imagine this is useful because these, let's say these are notes and I actually want to output those notes um, to a, a MIDI sequencer or, or a MIDI synthesizer or something. The next one is U for Euclidean rhythms, even though Euclidean starts with an E. Uh, the, most of these letters match up with um, what the the name of the, the operator is, just kind of as a mnemonic, and so U makes sense for Euclidean. Uh, basically, this is an algorithm that mimics or kind of um, produces rhythms that exist in all over the world, essentially, and all throughout history. So uh, what we're doing essentially is saying, um, if there are nine uh, beats, or actually we're going by frames here, if there are nine frames, try and uh, create a bang for four of them. And since four doesn't evenly divide into nine, we get a, an output that is an interesting sort of rhythm. V is for variable, which we already talked about, and W is for west, which creates a westbound W that bangs when it hits something or hits the edge of the screen, just like north, south, and east. X is to write uh, with an offset. So let's say the value is A. Again, it just like puts it as the output, but we've got X and Y here. So I could say I want uh, it to be three columns over and four rows down, and it's now going to um, put the output there. And you can you can see actually that this is essentially the same as G, right? If I say it's just a one, uh, one character or one value uh, length, and I put a V there, and then I say it's three over and four down, it does essentially the same thing as X. But of course, with, with G, the generator, it allows you to, to do more than just one value. Y is a yimper or jimper. And it does the same thing that J does, except it moves it toward the right. So again, this is to maneuver in tight spaces when you want operators to talk to each other. Uh, this is taking that four and moving it over there. Of course, I can add a J and move it down, add another Y and move it over. There's nothing to move left because everything kind of operates in this uh, upper left to lower right sort of direction. So that's those are the two that help you um, move them just by a, a couple of spaces in the grid. And the last one is Z, which is uh, essentially interpolation. It allows you to go from uh, the previous value to a new one uh, over uh, with at a certain rate. So if I put a one here, that's um, going to go by the, the normal frame rate. And let's say I'm going to go from zero, the current value, to a Z. So it goes frame by frame from zero all the way up to Z. If I put it uh, T in here after it gets to Z. Let's see what happens. It goes down to T. If I tell it to um, go at a faster frame rate, let's say four times, uh, and change this to say seven, it'll make its way from T to seven, but you can see it happened a lot quicker. And that means because it's uh, it's jumping, jumping quicker, it, it doesn't go through every possible value between T and seven. It's skipping a bunch. So that's it. Those are the uh, operators and essentially like you could kind of do anything with them. And uh, if you look at the other operators in the help, you'll see that uh, there are uh, different commands for sending MIDI and OSC and UDP. Um, and then there's a special one that sends ORCA commands. So pressing control K allows you to uh, type in commands here. And some of them allow you to do things like change, for example, the beats per minute. And now we can see we're at 120 beats per minute. Uh, that's one of the basic ones. Um, but you can also use a dollar sign and type in BPM colon 80. Oops, sorry. 80. And then when I bang this, uh, we'll see that it actually changes as well. So anything that you could put in with control K, that command mode, you could also do in the grid itself by using the dollar sign. Uh, it also can accept UDP messages or, um, and, and actually uh, have another piece of software send these same commands. So some other piece of software could be accepting, could, could be uh, changing the beats per minute or the color of the grid or all kinds of other things that are uh, listed in the documentation for Orca. Um, I, yeah, hopefully that's enough to get you started. I think most of the time when I see tutorials, they're really focused on making sound. And so that's like an extra layer. I would say if you can start making things that uh, 
that use just the operators then introduce sound. That's maybe an interesting way to approach learning how to use this crazy thing. And definitely look up a lot of uh, videos of people making sound and music with this because it's kind of an incredible tool.